Zechariah. See, that's why I need help. Zechariah, open your Bibles. Zechariah chapter 1. God calls for repentance, repentance, repentance. Throughout theme, Bible, repentance. Vision of horses, and you see Jesus Christ on the red horse, verse 8. And you see there the horses going throughout. God is aware of what your life and what's going on for his people, period. The Lord will comfort, the Lord will com provide. When we look out and we say, where are you, Lord? He is there, and he will comfort, he will provide. He has the plan. That's verse 13 and 16. Verse 18, the vision of horns. The horns there will be worldly powers that have hardships put upon you. God knows, God sees, and for every horn there's a craftsman to bring healing. Verse 20, last week. We move forward now, this week. The vision, the vision, the vision. The book is filled with visions and they apply to our lives today and they go exactly where we've been in Daniel and Revelation and in Joel. The connection is hard to make, but I will help you. That's when people struggle with, there's so many connections of prophecy. God prophesizes here, the Old Testament, the New Testament, a minor prophet and a major prophet. And he brings, when you bring them together, you say, wow, look what God did. And he's here coming alive in our eyes today and in our history, in this time of history. That raise my eyes. Hey, you getting discouraged? Raise your eyes. <laughs> There's a whole message right there. Look up. Look up. Yeah. There will be a time of the Gentiles that the Jewish people had to go through where the Gentiles seem to have power and horns over them. And God says, behold, Look and look up. I raised my eyes and looked, and behold, a man with a measuring line. So now we see angel number one, a man with a measuring line. And a measuring line, when I'm about to build something, I will go and evaluate. And I will evaluate with a measuring line. I got a little bit of time to go out in my shop today. And I started, now that I got all my tools back out there, well, out of the house, I'm, I'm starting to get organized. Starting. So I took some boards and I measured them out. And I put them up today. And I'm ready to start doing something and make something. And I have a vision I want to do and I'm already going to bring it. But it's already in my mind and I know what I need. God has so much more planning than I've ever thought. And he says, go with a measure in line. God has a plan for Israel. God has not forgotten Israel. Israel has people who hate him on every corner. And I don't get much political, but we need to pray for a man no matter who goes in office, that they'll support Israel. Because this Christian certainly will. Amen. I had someone get mad at me. You can't say that. I said, just did. I don't, I'm not getting political. I'm just saying. As Christians, we are called to support Israel. That's just good preaching. A man with a measure in line. God has a plan for his Israel. And it's in his hand. He's getting ready. God's getting ready. God has a plan. And we're seeing it come true in our day. All these countries hate Israel, but they can't touch it. Because I'm telling you, we're going to hear about a, a fire that surrounds Israel. You know, over in Africa, what they'll do with the sheep is they'll make bushes and put a fire around the sheep so the lions won't come in and eat them. Y'all ever notice I get clumsy and I get a lot of bruises? Boy, I need a fire around me. God protects us more than we could ever imagine. And he's protecting Israel today. And he will throughout the future. And he has a plan. And he said to me, to measure Jerusalem. Now we got very specific. In this day, in the last two months, you have seen... Decrees go out from U.S. in Palestine, if I'm correct, Gaza Strip, about what is and what is not Jerusalem. And God said this will happen. But let me tell you something. God's already measured Jerusalem, and he will determine what's Jerusalem's. Amen? We will see it in the millennial. It's a done deal. To measure Jerusalem, to see what it 
its width and its length. God's very concerned because he has big plans. And there was an angel, now another, who talked with me, going out. And another angel, wish I could have been there, was coming out to meet him, who said to him, run, speak to this young man, run. St. Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls because of the multitude of men and livestock in it. Right now, Jerusalem, Israel has walls. They're walls for protection. But the day's coming where we won't need any. The United States is pushing up walls, gates, fences, whatever you want to call it. There's a day coming after the tribulation time. We'll need no more walls. Anybody say amen? Ezekiel 33. Let's, let's learn more about walls. What does God's word say about walls and why are there walls? Ezekiel, Ezekiel 33, 1 through 10. The watchmen. We are called to be watchmen. And we are called to be watchmen for two types of protection. In this day and age, we protect the sheep from ravenous wolves. I protect the sheep from ravenous wolves. You bring false um, prophecy. You bring false word of God into this church. You're going to see a different Pastor Daryl. Anybody say amen? But I'm also called to protect this church. And I'm thankful for a safety team in case somebody ever would come in here to harm. Starting with the littlest children and child protection and beyond. Anybody say Amen. You say, where does it come from in the Bible? Let me show you. Ezekiel 33. We're called to be watchmen. Ezekiel 33, verse 1. And this is why there are walls. Again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, speak to the children of the people and say to them, When I bring a sword upon the land and the people of the land take a man from their territory and make him their watchman. Be a watchman. That's the man of God. And when the sword comes upon the land, if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, and whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning, if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and did not take warning. There are walls, and on the walls there are watchmen, and we are to make warnings so people would beware both of spiritual and physical harm. And did not take warning, his blood shall be upon himself. All I can do when I preach is warn. If you don't take warning, the blood's on you. But what if I do not warn? And what if we do not do due diligence to protect? But if the watchman sees the sword coming and it does not blow the trumpet, the people are not warned and the sword comes and takes any person from among them, he is taken away in his inequity and his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. We live in a day where there's walls. And we live in a day, in a world, just like Israel did when this was written, both in Zechariah and Isaiah and throughout, that we are called, the men of God, we're called to be watchmen and protect. The shepherd protects the sheep from the wolf, and that takes many levels. The first thing I'm aimed to do is be a watchman and preach the word of God so you can have salvation and have eternal life. If I do not preach repentance of sin and the gospel, your blood's on me. I don't want anybody in Mechanicsville to die and their blood be on me. I'll be knocking on doors. But if anybody comes to this church and they do not hear the gospel, their blood's on me. Spiritual protection, but also physical. Physical protection for Israel was very important in the day. And, and we live in a day now this is being brought up and over and over again. But God is saying, this is only for a time. And the day's coming, Revelation 21, 1 through 8. This is the day I want. This is the day I want to see. Revelation 21, 1 through 8. Amen. We're not always going to have the walls to protect. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. I'm not saying there are going to be walls there, but they're not going to need to protect us because the Lord God's going to protect us. 
I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and first earth passed away, and there were also no more sea, no more sin, no more sin for humanity, the sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, come down, New Jerusalem, coming to where? Jerusalem, out of heaven, God has already measured and lined, had it prepared, prepared as a bride, born for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He will dwell with them, and they'll be his people. And God will be with them, and he will be their God, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There's no more death, no more death, no more fear, no more people coming that the watchmen have to warn, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain, the former things have passed away. So God is saying, yes, we live in a day, back to Zechariah now, that there are walls, and that we do need to make the proper protections, spiritual, it starts with emotionally, physical, but the day's coming, the measuring line saying, no more walls. Isn't that wonderful? An earth that'll be at peace. And Jesus will be king. Zechariah speaking to our souls. It'll be inhabited as towns without walls. So it's not in disagreement with Ezekiel and his vision. Because of the multitude of men and livestock in it, he says, wait till you get a hold of this. There'll be a multitude in livestock. Shall we have our horses, I hope? Just kidding. There will be horses because we're riding back on them. I've seen it in the picture. But God says it'll be full. Fuller than you imagine. And the Israels will be more than Israels because the Gentiles will be grafted in through Jesus Christ. Anybody say amen? Amen. And then the good stuff, verse 5. For I, says the Lord. Now, this is, that, that's a different way that God speaks in most times. For I, says the Lord. God's saying, listen up, transition. I will be. Oh, wait a minute. I will be a wall of fire around her. Surrounding the Lord, a wall of fire. Nothing will come in that doesn't belong. A consuming fire. And I will be the glory in her midst. God is so big, he will be around and he'll be in. He'll be in our midst, but he'll still be around protecting. God is saying, Jerusalem, you're going to go through some times of the Gentiles. And by the way, that's the time we're living in still. That the Gentile nations around Israel may not be so fair or kind to them. But God's saying... I have a vision. The day's coming. Israel will be safe. And I will protect them. I truly believe without God's protection, Israel would not be like they are today. God's hand. Exodus 14, verse 19. Let's go back. Genesis, Exodus 14. There's a lot of movement today in the word to help us to make the connections because the connections help us to have a term. It's, the term is called systematic theology. So we, we take the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and, and we start putting it together and it fits together so beautifully. And when you grow deeper in the word of God, you're able to make the connections. Um, there's purpose for it. Exodus 14, verse 19. And all of a sudden we're going deep. And the angel Lord who went before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them. And a pillar of cloud went before them and stood behind them. So it came between the Egyptians. Now we know where we're at, the Exodus. And then it was a cloud of darkness to the one and it gave light by night to the other. So the one did not come near the other at night. Even before Moses stretched out his arm, to the sea to spread for the Israelites to go through and be saved from Pharaoh's armies. God had a pillar, a cloud, just like we see in the vision, protecting. Like I said, I think I have some protection going on. Anybody say amen? Don't underestimate the power of God Almighty to protect, to care for his Ways will come true. He is Almighty God. 
He's saying, Israel, I have a plan. So therefore, Israel, be joyful. Back to Zechariah, verse 6. Be joyful. Don't let the current day stress rob your joy. Because when it robs your joy, your joy in the Lord, you are weak. And when you are weak, you are more likely to sin and fall and make mistakes and cause your life to have calamities. Anybody say amen, been there? The joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm joyous in you. I'm not always joyous in others. Anybody say amen? But I'm joyous in him. That's where my health comes from. And look what he says. Up, up! We need to cry to our teenagers saying, our children, up, up! Touch it up! Look, daddy. Flee! God is saying, flee! And be very careful of who you allowed in your inner circle. Flee. Up, up! You are sitting with the wrong people. How is that good theology, Pastor Daryl? Excellent question. Let's move to Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 through 8. Up, up! And flee. Revelation 14, and then we'll go to 18. Revelation 14, verse 6. In Revelation here, God is warning. Before God blasts, he always warns. Revelation 14, 6. Then I saw another angel in heaven, in the midst of heaven, with the everlasting gospel, to preach to those dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, and tongue, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, for the hour has come of his judgment. And worship him who made the heaven and the earth. Verse 8, very important. And another angel followed, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. He's saying, up, up, get out of Babylon. You don't belong, child, with that crowd. Amen? Amen. Because judgment's coming. And my judgment that's coming to them, I don't want you to have. Go deeper, 18. We're going to Revelation chapter 18, verse 9 through 12. We've got to understand, up, up means something, and it connects to Revelation and the tribulation. Revelation 18, verse 9. The kings of the earth who communicate fornication and live luxury with her. Who's the her? Babylon, the mother of all harlots will weep and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning, standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, the great city Babylon, that mighty city, in one hour your judgment has come. Zechariah, verse 6. Up, up! (laughs) Get out of there. Free from the land of the north. You don't belong in the land of the north. You belong in Jerusalem says the Lord. Parents tell me sometimes and I think they need a house of wisdom. They say, well, when my child grows up, I'll let them decide if they go to church. The most impressionable years of their life, you're not teaching them up, up. And to be in the house of the Lord where you belong You're telling them to go places they don't belong. That means they're going to do things they shouldn't be doing. And you're letting this be done in the development of years when they don't have the wisdom to make smart choices. How do you think that's a good plan? I think it's more of an excuse not to parent. But that's just me. That's for me and my house. We shall serve the Lord and I'll bring my child up in the ways of the Lord. I'll be confident when they are old they will not depart. Up, up! Says the Lord, I have spread you abroad like the four winds of heaven. That's your circumstances. 
But God's going to bring them home. God's going to bring them home. The four winds of heaven, says the Lord, Up Zion, escape you who dwell with the daughter of Babylon. Escape. That judgment's coming. It's not meant for you. For thus says the Lord of hosts, he sent me after glory to the nations to plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. There's a statement that people often say, oh, the apple of God's eye, and don't realize they're quoting scripture. The apple of God's eye is the Jews and are the Jews. Those are his people. And in Jesus Christ, we are grafted in and we are of that people. Amen? So thus, through Jesus Christ, not because of birthright, but because of Christ's righteousness in me, I am adopted and I am a child of God. And I'm the apple of his eye. And he's got his eye on me. And he says, up, up. Come out of them. For surely I will shake my hand against them, and they will become spoiled for their servants. Then you will know the Lord of hosts has sent me. God is going to do something, and we may be alive when he does it. And it's going to be so powerful, we're going to say, only God could have done that. And he did it to protect his people. I can see visions throughout the tribulation where bombs will go into Jerusalem and have no effect. And God will protect them and God will take care of them. And we're going to say, only the Lord God is doing that. Don't they have the wisdom though? You're you're attacking the apple of God's eye. You're not fighting against man, you're fighting against God. Then you know the Lord of hosts has sent me. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. And that should be our life. When we are stressed out, sing and rejoice. Sometimes we need to say to ourselves, up, up, look up, look up. Stop looking down. You look down, you see stress, you see problems. Look up. God's got this. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. Behold, I am coming, and I will dwell in your midst, says the Lord. Many nations shall be joined in, joined to the Lord. That's us. And in that day, they shall become my people. And there's the church. And I will dwell in your midst, and you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. And the Lord will take possession of Judah and his inheritance in the Holy Land. God will take possession. God has a measure in line. And God has already predetermined. And Jerusalem will be so much bigger than it ever is known on earth. And we will be part of it. And a pillar of fire of the Lord will protect it. And not only will it be on the outside protecting it, it will be inside in our midst. And we'll again choose Jerusalem. Yeah, Jerusalem. The old Old Testament is about God's righteousness, God's love for his people, God's people fallen into sin, God's judgment to call them, God calling them to repent. A repentance for a short time, then a turning back to their own ways, just like a lot of our lives are subject to. And God calling them out again, and God chastising them, but God has not forgot them. And he's going to bring it home. Be silent. Here's a be silent that's a different. God is saying, you know what I do? I'll give you a picture. I'm going to be silent in about a half hour. I'm going to be sitting in my hot tub looking at the stars. And... I'm telling you, I pray. And a lot of my prayer is praising God. And you know a song I often sing loud? Well, I'm silent and loud. I have bipolar, I guess. I don't know. But listen, I have the ability to do multiple tasks. I sing how great thou art. I look at the heavens. And I consider your majesty, how great thou art, how great thou art. I get silent for a while, and I look up, and it's not long before I start praising him. 
I have sung how great thou art so many times in the night sky. Be silent. Be utterly astonished. For the day is coming when everyone will be. Why not be now and expect it? All flesh before the Lord. For he is aroused from his holy habitation. Why is God sleeping? Why does he not come and avenge the blood of the saints? Wait a little bit. Wait. The day is going to come where we are utterly astonished. I pray that blessed you tonight. Connect. Think about connecting. And when you're able to systematically connect, all of a sudden God's word comes together as one. All those books are one in Jesus Christ. Father, I love you and I'm so excited about your word. It means so much to me and I love singing praise to you. I look up and I will soon be looking up. My little boy will be right beside me looking up at the stars and have an awesome wonder. Oh yes, how great thou art. Help us, God, to see that you have not forgotten Israel, but the call for us too is that Israel is our future home because you'll be their Lord. And where you are, we will be too. And we also all the apple of your eye. And you have a plan for us. You have a plan for Israel. And help us to look up and trust you. And help us to come out from the things we shouldn't be a part of. And have the wisdom to know the difference. I ask this all, Christ, in your precious name. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed.